today, we welcome my friend and respected colleague. He is not just an MC. He is not just an actor, a painter, fashion designer, at all. A whole bunch of things wrapped into a 360 degree artist, which is one of the main reasons why I wanted to present these lovely artists. He's part of this crew of us that create nonstop, even in times of trouble. That's when we activate. So today we welcome my brother, Wes Felton. Welcome to the show. Silversations, brother. Thank you, man. I, you know, it's funny. I, I never, uh, in the midst of all of those wonderful things you said, I, as, as, as a interdisciplinary artist, oh, I, like I, that. I never get, I've never get comfortable with being introduced. Um, because it's just always weird to hear that because I know it, it, it's, it's almost triggering for me because people, believe it or not, when you are a person who chooses to kind of be, uh, you know, a mixed media kind of guy, people just, oh, my God, in your life, they hate it. When, you know, you're, they equate it to being undisciplined or unfocused. And so when I hear it out loud, I'm always like, oh, God. Like, it's like stressful, but that's a real thing. Thank you for having me, man. I'm glad I'm here. My <laughs> absolute pleasure. There's no way that this could happen without having somebody like you here, brother. Thank you. Um, but I do real quick. I want to unpack that trigger thing. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we got to deprogram ourselves from that, right. you know, because I know folks will snap off and say, oh, Wes is a paint. Oh, he painting now. Right, right. And then like what you wearing something that you designed. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, let's let's kill that trigger. I'm yeah. with you. I know, but you know, it's just uh, unfortunately uh, in this industry, uh, they often limit black men to either being the predator or the prey. Hey. And so when you start throwing in concepts that, you know, black men are very diverse in their thought or styles or stuff, you know, it, it often brings out the, 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 the scum right. versus the, uh, you know, the flowers. And, right. And so... So that's why I, I just so you're right. It's, you know, it's not a trigger where I'm going to flip the tables or anything. <laughs> right. I, no, I feel you. So, brother. Yes. Where are you from? Uh, I'm actually from Washington, D.C. The uh, part. Northeast. I grew up uh, in an area that they call Deanwood now. Okay. Um, at that time, it was called 58th, <laughs> which is basically, you know, the street uh, where you're from. Uh, a guy named Marvin Gaye also uh, spent guy. some time mm -hmm. um, on on that street as well, so um, I'm proud to kind of be from that neighborhood. Um, and uh, that neighborhood's a, a a neighborhood about survival. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in an interesting location because it's literally like you go a couple blocks up this way, it's southeast. You mm -hmm. go a couple blocks over here, it's northeast. You go a couple blocks back here, you're in Seat Pleasant, Maryland. Okay, you go over that way, you're in Capitol Heights. So it's um, I've lived in what's closest to be the DMV in the literal form. OK, if there was a way that you could stand <laughs> in multiple places at one time. So, OK, um, I'm proud of that neighborhood and proud to, you know, come from there. You know? And knowing knowing you uh, leads to my next question. And with D.C., like one of the things that I know, in addition to at all, all of the, the creating that you do, I know unmistakably, immutably, that you are from Washington, D.C. Exactly. Yeah. So so if you could articulate, how does D.C. show up in your art or in your life even? Well, I think um, every, every so often there are colloquialisms, you know, slangs that might come up. But I think, I think, uh, I, and it's funny, it took me to go all the way to like Tokyo, Japan to have this confirmed to me, where they sat me down um, for this magazine and they they related me to the lineage of the soul searchers and um, uh, father's children, like some of these obscure groups that are known and not known that were from D.C. who capture a, uh, an ability to make uh, what I what I used to call honest music. Now now there's some other artists that have. A, I've adopted that phrase as the honest music movement. Mm -hmm. Well, traditionally, D.C. artists, because we were here in the nation's capital, um, because we were, all, uh, were a part of the country that, you know, maybe black folks felt a little bit more free to express themselves, 
historically, um, you know, you, you look at Benjamin Banneker mm. and his effect and imp- impact. You look at Marion Barry. Uh, you know, we have always had the ability to create, um, but we never forgot where we were and where we were from and the effects that often the decision makers of this, this city, uh, how it affects everyone else. And so consequently, if you're making certain music that's in a certain region, you want to, you're affecting the vibrations of that place, mm-hmm. whether you are aware of it or whether you're unaware of it. That's the whole heavy thing about this new go-go movement, Don't Mute DC thing, is that it literally, uh, you're dealing with the difference between being silenced um, and literally not having a voice. Right. And because we are in a city that's not a state, um, there is often lack of voices for us um, in the political arena. Mm -hmm. But traditionally, DC's artists have always made a point to make music that not only spoke about uh, love or relationships, but actually spoke about the true components and ingredients that go towards revolution. All right. And how, you know, how they always say it took forever to build Rome, but it was torn, torn down over in one night. And so the idea that, yeah, it's like, <laughs> like, yeah, you were here in Babylon Central in D.C., but at any moment, any second, it, if the right spark is flipped, then his hand to the right person with that Molotov. Right. And then that Molotov is creatively launched. Then boom, you, 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 you potentially have, you know, what took with centuries and decades to happen. It, it can go into motion overnight. Right. So DC, uh, for me, I reflect that tradition of DC sound of having like, you know, political commentary, uh, social commentary. I, I, I try to, incorporate all those things at one time uh, while working on stuff. Hey yo, everybody likes the circus. Whether there's a hell below, huh? Word to Curtis, may feel the play field surface. It's so pointless, it's so damn worthless. Dope boys still run the city circuit. Young boys desire the perception of purpose. Imitators, imitating imitators. The preacher still claiming how he gon' save us. The president making it evident. He gives a damn white boys think he heaven sent. Cloudy days are way more prevalent. Bullshit artists are way more relevant. Beware of the con artists. They have no vocab and no logic. Look out for the flying objects Niggas fall off like dying objects It's nonsense to be quite honest Shiny and tarnish Grimy and polish Tiny and garnish Grimy and polish See, I see suns taking away too soon Wow, this country's still looking for new moons Young girls snapchat and they boom booms Wow, mama on Tinder looking for new spoons It could be gold, silver or plastic Not here for the hookup dramatics It's something about that that vinyl static remind you of why you a hip-hop fanatic we gotta resist against these fascists they seem to be growing the fastest here foul this here under a classic head nod your way into the spasm biscuit on the track if you want to tag them this is just a drop of the heat now i'm bragging washing in caps no bandwagon niggas yelling we got the cup with pants sagging gentrifying while mother's crying chocolate's mini belton sad i'm not lying buy up your block while they dying grow up your trees why niggas buy them i got a feeling this summer is crying i got a feeling this winter mamas are crying yeah scratching and surviving a dream deferred or perfect timely we need more doctors and less rhyming less consumption and more designing it's like Yeah, 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 yeah. See, we so hard on each other and call it honesty. I just want my rights that will promise me the world is changed forever as we know it. Got our mask on and the future ain't noticed. 
The most dangerous man on the planet is the POTUS The second most dangerous is the poet If you would just wake up and take notice It ain't about being the wokest or the dopest Systematic racism still operates with COVID Or it's just Darwin's ghost hunting the hopeless Black folk got hella work Barely few can tell her work Bus drivers and store clerks I protect my soul from the swords that they swing I still can't believe they killed Dr. King A shift of identity is worth giving a try Can't happen overnight but in a blink of an eye So would you say that you are your the relationship to art and activism is very strong. Absolutely, absolutely. I believe that that is a requirement of being a DC artist, and All that's right. why I say like I, I really didn't discover it and embrace it until I was in Japan, and I saw how other parts of the world what they factor in to chronicleize like who they consider part of the DC lineage and history of music. Mm -hmm. Um, and those are factors that they factor in. They factor in the the the, the fact that we have that political um, component. Component, mm -hmm. uh, you know, whether it's conscious or unconscious. Um, to me, it's just a natural instinct. <laughs> you know, it's like, and if you really go back and you research and look at the history of of of, of artists from this area, that was what they did. Right. You know, from punk rock to go-go, to eventually the embracement of hip-hop and things like that. Now, now, okay, so we got to get back to this on another talk show, but yeah, this, yeah. this, this, I didn't know that punk rock had a history in D.C. Oh, well, you know, punk, for, for, for the longest time, uh, when go-go bands begin to evolve and generations begin to evolve, if you remember, go-go used to be cook-a-boo-goo, right. cook right? Right. Mm -hmm. And then eventually a generation came around and they slowed it down a little bit to mm -hmm. cook a boo, -boo. Right. Right. Now, like most generations, they never really want to embrace new. So the only communities that were embracing this new style of go-go mm -hmm. was the punk rock community. So you look at places like Fort Reno out there up at Wilson High School. OK. Uh, there's a place called Madams, Oregon. That, yeah. That yeah. Man. But but it used to be in this little tiny place down the hill from where we know Madams, Oregon. OK. And punk rock bands and go-go bands would pile up in there and they would all play gigs together. Oh. So so to make it full circle, the, that's why now the younger generation, they now have an evolution of go-go which is called like beat your feet or okay. that, right? So now for my generation and some people, it's like, oh, what is that? Like, right? <laughs> Story Same of music, thing, right? right? But if you really pay attention, it's them now coming full circle right. to the punk rock movement. With the four on the floor. Got you. Yeah, I'm going to have to check that out. We're going to have so, to check that so, out. So then you had a black band called Brad Brains mm -hmm. who evolved, who was from D.C. They even got banned from D.C. because they caused that, they okay. became a voice of that resistance, a reminder of that, where they took the punk rock and they sped it up even more in a way that consequently affected, you know, from Red Hot Chili Peppers to whoever. So D.C. has always been a source of not just uh, the, the, the inspiration for revolt and revolution, but also the adjusting the frequencies of music globally. Right. So, That's very important. Yeah. But that speaks to the next question yes. I got for you. What is Wes Felton's musical DNA? My DNA is a bunch of things. You know, my father was a jazz pianist named Hilton Felton. Uh, he was a uh, original soul searcher. So he's playing organ and keys on a lot of those records. And he uh, went on to play with George Benson and um, so what Green choice? and people like that. But so, Wes, but hold on. But what choice would you have but to be a soul searcher tradition, man? You, you, you had to... You, I feel it. Well, yeah, I'm, well I'm not the eldest of the sons. My brother was, is, was named after my father, and he was a piano player as well. I feel and that. But is it, that is really in your DNA. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, no, no. Your yeah, DNA. That's it. I mean, that's, that's, that's mm -hmm. what it is. Uh, I just embraced, uh, I was fortunate enough where I was part of the hip-hop generation, so going back and touching vinyl and, and putting them on records and going like this with them and you know, taking, finding breaks and stuff. And then to discover like, oh, damn, my dad 
got records that he had these crazy breaks on. And then it consequently, consequently led me to realize like, oh, people have already, people have been sampling my dad's records and we didn't know, you know? Mm -hmm. and, it, and so it was only right. Now my father, at first, he didn't like hip hop. He didn't believe in it. And it took me to show him like, oh, well, you know, check out the Fugees, check right. out the Tribe Called Quest, check out, so and he immediately he, was like, oh, so he that's can Ron see this, Carter, this, that's this. Some yeah. of these parts, all of these parts coming together. Mm -hmm. I feel that. Yeah. Throw your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. Throw your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. Say, throw your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. And if you wanna get down for the human race, let me hear y'all say, oh yeah, uh. of the world we have such funny ways of acting when we want someone to hear the words our heart are trying to say using sign language body language text message Trying to disguise all the anguish and pain you've been left with, but you gotta be an example for the one you love. Keep a tight grasp and handle on the emotional stuff. Of being dramatic Just damage that even balance Of what should be a companion Shipwreck Conciliation We have no affiliation We just get angry Loose language uh, Make foolish statements You're who I choose to blame it on I'm ashamed it's wrong I'd rather call you out your name Till the pain is gone so basically, I'm left with me, but luckily, I know who I'm supposed to be, cause I gotta be an example, for the one I love, keep a tight grasp and handle, on the emotional stuff, yeah, cause you're worth So Wes, in this musical journey that we have all taken, um, there was a moment for all of us where we reached a crossroads. It was like, okay, like jumping double dutch. Are we in? Are we out? I can't do it. I can. What was the spark for you that made you decide, okay, I'm going to take this plunge? Well, it, 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 for me, it's, it was a couple experience, but slightly similar. Um, one was in the form of an ex-girlfriend who, you know, I used to write pretty lovely songs and poems about. 
And then one day uh, I wrote about the darkness of our relationship and I, you know, turned it into song form. And uh, man, she came to me and was just, you know, I went from her, you know, favorite artist in the world to like her most hated villain uh, instantly. So I, for me, I, I, I'm a little sick in the mind a little bit uh, <laughs> to admit that I enjoy that a little bit, um, the control aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but also, uh, it was very polite. So it was a very polite song. So it wasn't like it was laced with foul language or calling her out of her name or anything. So of that, course. I was like, oh, okay. But then uh, there was a moment where I did a show and there was this like a little old white lady who I knew normally probably would, would avoid me, uh, you know, like the plague. She uh, came up to me afterwards and she literally stood there and held my hand. I didn't even know this lady. And other people were still coming by. People probably assumed she was some type of relative or something of mm -hmm. mine. I don't know. And uh, but she just was there. She was just so moved. And she just told me, like, you know, my words and how I, you know, uh, performed and expressed them, um, how it just impacted her. And it made me really realize that, like, you know, um, this is a tool. This is a, a, a means of of change, mm -hmm. um, of impact. And, uh, you know, like they say with you know, Spider-Man and other superheroes, you know, with superpowers, there comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I began to really just embrace that that part of art, um, full, full, just full, full steam ahead. Um, I like the idea that, you know, you could take, there, there could be decades of, of, of people trying to fight to break down a door or, mm. or, or smash a glass ceiling, but it could be that one song or that one poem that someone creates that changes the heart of the person who has to make that decision. Those two were, the, were for me, the most impactful moments um, because they happened to me at a very early age. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, moving forward, I've just always, you know, uh, used my art as a weapon, as a tool for change, whether it's to change the, the circumstances in a relationship, um, or circumstances, um, you know, with what I see in society. Yeah. Service. Yeah. That's real, man. Year 2060. Mm. What is West? Don't worry about age or nothing like that. Right. It's like you are alive and thriving. 2060. Yeah. What is West Felton's legacy? Uh, West Felton's legacy will be uh, uh, two two uh, uh, Academy Awards as a director. And Come writer. on. Um, I, I will have received a supporting actor uh, <laughs> acting award at that time. I, I don't think I'll ever get a leading actor award. No limits. Um, but uh, I definitely view my legacy as uh, one who continued the, tra the traditions of uh, Duke Ellington and, uh, you know, uh, Paul Roberson and Sammy Davis Jr. and Gregory Hines. And that is um, just being a, a black male who laid down an example of how you can be uh, multidimensional and, 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 you know, you can express yourself in all types of ways and forms of expression. Um, and be a black man in America and do it and survive doing it while constantly attempting to um, show others. Just be an example. That's the tradition of Basquiat. That's the tradition of Harriet Tubman. That's the tradition of, uh, you know, Nat Turner, mm -hmm. uh, whoever, you know, whether you're an actor, a doctor, lawyer, preacher, whatever. Again, we keep using that word service. But it's the idea like, yeah, like I want to be one of those people that people look back and be like, yeah, you know, this guy was like, you know, he, you know, people didn't people were uncomfortable with rappers and singers when this guy first started. And, you know, he, he did it at a time when people weren't as embracing it as much. And then eventually, you know, there were artists that started coming out later on, you know what I'm saying, in the 2000s where that became a more embraced thing. But there was this guy who, you know, in many ways sacrificed his career in some forms to try to be something and normalize something that for some people 
wasn't normal at that time, you know, or, or there was this one guy, you know, who, you know, during a pandemic, rather than him, you know, shutting down and hunkering down, he decided to paint 50 paintings. Word. And, you know, and use that as a form of expression. Or this guy made five albums during lockdown. You know, it, it, again, it's to be an example um, versus uh, being the destination. Like, I want to, I, 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 people worry about, people talk about the born date and the death date of a person. My focus is that dash. That in dash in the middle. Yeah, so that's that's what I want my legacy to be in. Hopefully, it's a strong enough legacy. It will be. Where my, my Affirmative. Son will, well, my son, yeah, well, it's a, it will be a strong enough legacy where I then have my son, uh, you know, feel the passion and desire to even continue um, that. Because that's what I've been doing for my father as well. So, Brother, yeah. without any exaggeration, I'm very grateful that you came to share this time with me. Thank you. Thanks for um, having me. And with all of us to let these people know who W. West Felton is. Yeah, whoever you are, wherever <laughs> you are. <laughs> and you about to rock this stage. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to have a killing set from my brother W. Felton, West Felton. Uh, thank you for joining us at Soul Versations. I'm Russell Taylor. Stay tuned for this rock and set. Thank you. What about you? I bet you think it's easy. I bet you think it's easy. It takes real hard work to do what we do. What about you? I bet you think it's easy I bet you think it's easy So, so, so Listen, I gotta go again Doing a show again I just came back, but that's the ebb and flow of it No show, no dope I know you're feeling me Cause if I leave that heart, yours is still with me See, traveling distant places can be the hardest, especially when home is where your heart is. Being an artist can be a challenge. I care less about my talent when my life ain't balanced. I be missing my son, wondering what he's done. Is he having fun? Man, I miss my mom. See trains, planes, automobiles Folks in the game who ought to be real Sometimes a couch, uh, sometimes a bed Trains, planes, automobiles Come home soon, I promise I will Not quite yet, instead Take this postcard from the edge See, promoters they call And her tears they fall Every time she knows that I have to go Off to do a show again Baby, never know when, when I'll be back at last Is this the last, how much time will pass? These shows keeps the lights on So I'm sorry, girl, I might be gone for a month or two But it's all good when I come through for you Cause trains, planes, automobiles Folks in the game who wanna be real Sometimes a couch uh, Sometimes a bed Trains, planes, automobiles Come home soon, I promise I will Not quite get instead Take this postcard from the end See, baby, can't you see I need you to come home to me I'm so lonely I feel like I can't breathe I have so many needs Baby, won't you hold me? When you are far away Ooh, how long it seems the days 
move slowly, 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 slowly It takes real hard work to do what we do What about you? Huh. I bet you think it's easy I bet you think it's easy Oh, it takes real hard work to do what we do. What about you? I bet you think it's easy. Uh, I bet you think it's easy. Yeah, take this postcard from the edge. So we got a lightning round. Lee, you got to answer. I'm going to give you five questions. You answer them really fast. You cannot string it out. That's against the rules. Yeah. I'll, burn, I'll give you one of those. Good. Okay, here we go. Lightning round. Uh, dream collaboration, dead or alive? Uh, Mozart. <laughs> All right. All right. You stunned me on that one. I was like, whoa. Okay, next one. Favorite movie or play? Wedding Crashers. <laughs> book, book you cannot live without. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna have to come back on that. No problem. Nick, name five things that you would put in a time capsule. An iPod. Uh, an IPA. That's beer for y'all. Yeah, don't an know. IPA beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, a Barack Obama button. Um, a one of my CDs. All right. One. one more. And then a uh, a photo of uh, a photo. Uh, a group photo that I that, that we took some years ago in front of the Lincoln Theater on U Street of like all the artists to watch. Okay. Yeah. All right. We got one more. What have you been doing during COVID? Has it been a creative time or self care? Oh, absolutely. Well, the last couple of years have been self care for me because I've been single. So. Oh. Uh, but COVID, <laughs> but uh, the COVID uh, for me has definitely been a creative time. Okay, um, it's forced. It's kind of forced people to catch up with a lot of the work that myself and other uh, prolific artists have been creating. You've so, been painting, designing, and so forth. Yeah. Okay, so we got one more question because we skipped one. So let's say, uh, what's your favorite thing about DC? My favorite thing about DC is what dc used to be which is because it used to be dc used to be a very uh cool um it used to be a city that was full of cool black folk and cool white folk period period thank you for the lightning round (laughs) thank you (laughs) all right now we're face to face can you see me oh 